Hello hello. With this film I show you how the original Commodore C64 controls my 3-axis CNC milling machine. To protect the C64 from dust and mechanical damage, I installed it in a 19-inch case. The 1541-2 floppy disk drive and the power supply are also housed here. First I load the basic part of the CNC machine software from the disk. After starting with run, a small machine language program is loaded. The main menu of the CNC control now appears. Menu item 1 starts the reference run, starting with the Z axis. Followed by the Y axis. And finally the X axis. Menu item 7, takes you to the program management. Menu item 1 of the program management lists the CNC programs saved on the disk. The spacebar opens the next page. If the program you are looking for is on the disk, it is entered under menu item 2. In the example the program, step 31. Point 3, opens the CNC program. Here you have a control view of the program, but can also make changes if necessary. Tapping 0 twice, takes you back to the main menu. Menu item 4, selects the automatic operating mode. Point 9, starts the machining program in single block or step mode. A magnet serves as a stop for the PCB. For the engraving I use a 20 degree engraving burr. Menu item 8 starts processing in fully automatic mode. Now the processing starts. And the good old Commodore C64 works through the engraving program line by line. First I engrave the outer edges of the PCB. The finished dimensions of the PCB are 30mm by 40mm. The window below shows the currently running program line. Unfortunately, the maximum speed of the main spindle is only 7200 RPM. That's why the feed rate when engraving has to be so minimal. The maximum working range of the machine is 200 mm in the X and 200 mm in the Y direction. A maximum of 100 mm is possible in Z. The finished engraved and drilled PCB is equipped with a 7805 voltage regulator, an AT Tiny 85, an A4988 stepper motor driver and some resistors. This board can then be used to control a stepper motor via the Tiny 85 software. The possible uses of these PCBs are diverse. For example, I use it to control the feed spindle of my lathe. The cupboard doors in my kitchen can also be opened automatically with this PCB. I will present these applications in further films. In the year of construction 1996, I looked a bit younger back then. The CNC machine was intended solely for drilling hole patterns in my circuit boards. Over time, I also started using it for milling plastic and aluminum. 
I drill and label enclosures, or employ the machine, as shown in the example video, for engraving circuit boards. Now follow the last lines of the engraving program, where my logo and the PCB version number are engraved into the board. These program lines show that the C64 and the CNC program can also engrave curves and slanted lines. Finally, all the holes for the various components are drilled. I use a 0.8mm carbide drill for this, and it is an enormous advantage to have the CNC machine. From the main menu I jump to the program management with 7. And then under point 2 I load the drilling program for this PCB. Zero jumps back to the main and four to the automatic menu. Eight starts the fully automatic operation. At the start of the program, the spindle first moves to the origin of the board. This is in the front right corner. Then the drilling process follows. When I tried to drill the holes with a hand drill, a lot of drill bits broke off. So I had to find another solution. This is how this C64 project came about in 1996. Since then, I have had a lot of fun every time I use the nostalgic Commodore computer, and its 8 bits can complete a new task. As you could see at the beginning of the film, many of these tasks have already come together on the floppy disk. And there isn't just one of these disks. I will show more about the software, which is largely programmed in BASIC, the connection of the Commodore C64 to the motor drivers, the structure of the CNC milling machine and the hardware of the control, in further videos. So subscribe to the channel now so you don't miss the next interesting videos. Once all the holes have been machined, the program moves the board forward to make it easier to remove. This is what the finished drilled and cut board looks like. And this is the board with the soldered components. That's the top view with the AT-Tiny85. And this with the complete sandwich equipment. Thanks for watching.